When uh, you are building an app for uh, both Android and iOS, you often need to request uh, some kind of a permission. And not just that, you also need a way to check whether the user has denied that permission temporarily or uh, permanently, so that you can properly respond in your app. Whether you need permission for display notifications, tracking your user's location, using a camera, or any other important feature, you do need to handle that on a two platforms separately. Luckily, there is one amazing KMP library that uh, helps you write that logic only once in the common code. This is the list of uh, currently supported permissions that this library supports. Also, I have uh, already generated a, a simple Compose uh, multi-platform project that uh, we're gonna use as a demo. If you're using Compose uh, multi-platform like I do, you just need to add this uh, single artifact. Also, be sure to include it in your common main source set and we're good to go. Now, I will quickly add a few UI elements on this screen so that I can show you how to properly handle permissions on both Android and iOS. Now, there are a few differences between the platforms that you need to know. Like for example, in Android, we do need to declare a post notification permission inside the Android manifest file to support the API level 33 and higher. Or otherwise, you will not be able to show notifications. On iOS, on the other hand, you also need to request a permission at runtime for notifications, but you don't need to explicitly declare anything inside the info plist file. While when using location permission on iOS, you do need to specify why you need it. And I will show you that in a moment. So after we have uh, created the two buttons on this uh, screen, we're gonna also add a snack bar state because we're gonna display some informative messages if the permission is denied. First, I want to handle a notification permission. So for the Android part, be sure to declare that permission in Android manifest file, while on iOS we don't need to add anything. Next, I will create the new function that will be used to request a permission at runtime. But before that, let's also declare a few variables. First, we need a coroutine scope to trigger certain logic for requesting permissions, as well as for showing a snack bar. Then we need to remember permission controller factory and obtain a permission controller object as well. After that, we need to call a bind effect function and pass the controller object, or otherwise we will receive a runtime exception if we run the application without it. Now let's create that function. So I will create one suspend function for a triggering a permission check. Because we will use this same function in two different places for requesting notification permission and for requesting location permission. So we can use here a controller object to check whether a permission is granted or not. If it's not granted, we can request a specific permission. This provide permission function can actually throw a various exceptions at a runtime, which is important to wrap this code in a try and catch. The first denied exception will be thrown when a person has already denied the access. The second one denied the always when a permission is permanently denied. And the third one request cancelled exception when the dialog is closed. So the first and the third one can throw only on an Android platform. But nevertheless, we're gonna handle all those three exceptions. So for the first one, we can show a snack bar message to inform the user that the permission has been denied. If the user wants to grant the permission, uh, then we can open up the app settings with this utility function. And of course, we can trigger that function when this uh, action label is clicked. With a second catch block, we can practically do the same thing. And in the third one, we should display a message only. Great. We can now call this function when we click the first button and pass those three parameters. The first one should be the actual permission that we are requesting. In this library, a post notification permission is called remote notification, just so you know. Now, let's also pass the controller and the snack bar host as well. We can try launching this application on both Android and iOS to see how it works. As you can see, when we request that permission and we actually allow the permission, then everything will work fine. If we press that button once again, we're gonna receive that the permission is already granted. On the other hand, if we request the permission and deny it, 
And then if we click that button once again, we're going to receive a message that the request has been denied. And of course, we have an option to open up the settings and then manually enable this permission. Perfect. Now for the location, I will choose a find location permission that lets us get a more precise user location. On Android, when declaring a find location in an Android manifest file, you also need to declare course location permission. And when using this Samoku permissions library, you just need to call permission.location. Now, for the iOS part, we need to open up the info plist file and specify an explanation of why do we need this location permission from a user. So you have three options. NS location when in use usage description, NS location always usage description, and NS location always and when in use usage description. Depending on how you want to use this location, feel free to define those values at your convenience. In this case, I will say that we need the location permission only while we are using this application. Now, we can also launch this application to test it out. You can see that it works pretty much the same way as with the previous notification permission. We are able to trigger the permission dialog on both Android and iOS. So there you go. That's how you can handle permissions in a Compose multi-platform environment. Don't forget to leave a like to this video, but only if you find it helpful. Thank you for watching.